So having collected our fitness testing data in Excel and uh, transferred it across into SPSS, and we looked how to do that in the last video, so I've got all my variables now uh, demonstrated in this tab. And so I've just copy and pasted the data um, then into the into the right columns. And of note, it's uh, one athlete per row. So this whole row here only relates to athlete one. This whole row here only relates to two, uh, athlete two, and, and so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is analyze the, the reliability of our data, because if the data is not reliable, then really we just need to disregard it and not progress any, any further. And that's why we have uh, our two trials of each. Um, uh, in this case, that was logistically all we, we could fit in, and uh, the guys we tested were, were pretty good anyway. So hopefully we got their best score uh, within that, and um, we, we were able to um, uh, be quite consistent with how we collected that data as well. So we're going to go to Analyze, uh, we're going to go to Scale, and we're going to go to Reliability Analysis here. So we're going to look at uh, one test at a time. So we have uh, the Acceleration, Trial 1 and Trial 2, and we'll put that across into the Items box. Uh, once we've done our, our Reliability Analysis uh, with Acceleration, we'd switch that out and then uh, do Speed, put that in. Uh, take that out and then and then work our way work our way down. So um, the reliability analysis we're going to do here is called uh, the intraclass correlation coefficient. Uh, in Excel, we've done what's called the coefficient of variation, and you should still do that. But in SPSS, we're going to do the the ICC as it's shortened to. So we click on that statistics tab here, it opens up this box here, and you can see their intraclass correlation coefficients. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and tick that. We're going to look at two-way random because the error from the test could come from uh, the athlete or tester and, and the piece of equipment itself. And we're going to look at absolute agreement because we want the scores between trials, whether that's two trials, three trials, four trials, to be absolutely identical. Uh, consistency could could be that uh, in trial two everyone runs uh, their same score one second faster. In trial three they all run it uh, two seconds faster. So although the scores are not identical they are consistent in terms of their rank. So we want to, to go with absolute agreement and then we're going to uh, click continue and uh, then OK. So uh, then we get uh, this uh, out, uh, output, and uh, if we read down from here, here's our intraclass correlation coefficient. We get single measures or average measures, because when we do our trials, we take the best score of the, uh, of the two, or the three, the four, we read across the single measures intraclass correlation coefficient. Um, if we were to just average the score from the two trials, then we would uh, read across for the average measures. So here the intraclass correlation coefficient is uh, 0.615. And, uh, when we're done with that, we haven't actually got to go back to the, the previous screen. We can go back into scale, reliability analysis, and get rid of these two, and then move on to the, to the next one. So let's look at counter movement jump now. And you'll see that uh, it also keeps the, the same format. So really I could have just pressed OK and the next one will come up. And here you see a, a far more uh, reliable score. Again, we do single measures. It's 0.924. That's, that's a very good correlation coefficient. Uh, one being a, a perfect match. Um, and there's our 95% confidence intervals. So uh, this is a, a, a more innate movement, one that they're able to reproduce themselves a, a lot better, whereas perhaps they haven't done a lot of pro-agility, hence there's quite a lot of variation from trial to trial, uh, and uh, that's why you get scores that, that differ that much more between trials. Whether you class that as an acceptably reliable um, uh, measure is up to you. 
And it's nice to get scores at least into the uh, point 0.8, maybe some in, in point 0.7. Uh, but feedback might be that we need to introduce some pro-agility a little bit more within their, their training um, and just to uh, get the, the scores a little bit more reliable.